Um, dear all, uh, good day everybody, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to uh, express my gratitude for the invitation. So uh, I would uh, like to express it uh, concerning the organizers of the conference and also thank you everybody for your patience in advance. Actually, my topic uh, is going to be about uh, the role of the European Union. The European Union is a factor in the conflict resolution in the Western Balkans, uh, Bosnia. And uh, um, I'm going to present uh, a Scandinavian approach um, in uh, conflict resolution. As you all know, uh, little, uh, numerous uh, extensive pages uh, have been written about uh, the transformative power of the European Union in terms of institutional and political change of uh, the Balkans of the Balkan countries. Uh, but uh, now my uh, presentation is going to adopt a uh, more theoretic uh, form and perspective. So first of all, uh, the purpose of my presentation uh, uh, it contains five uh, fundamental features. First of all, it's a part of a, theoretic, of a theoretical framework which I, am in, which I would like to, uh, to develop in the course of my uh, research preparation uh, for, um, in, uh, for my PhD thesis. The second point is it, it, that uh, it's a kind of uh, different Scandinavian approach in conflict management, and I'm going to explain later that this approach is based on, on the struggle against the roots for conflicts, so against the deep-rooted features of a conflict. And not everything which is visible on the surface in terms of conflicts is uh, the broad and the full picture. Coincides, it doesn't coincide with the, full, with the, full, with the entire picture. The second point, the second aim is that I'm going to explain some feasible steps in the European Union's role to bring positive peace in Bosnia. The fourth point is how I'm going to explain, as I told you, steps how the European Union can fulfill, realize its role. And I'm going to mention just also several possible steps. The fifth point, the last uh, point, is uh, that uh, the aim of the approach of this uh, approach in conflict resolution, which is, uh, as you, are, you all are going to see, is going to, uh, is, will be the transformation of the conflict environment of violence into peaceful relations, not only just reconciliation, but cooperation between the ethnicity groups in Bosnia and Herzegovina and between all the ethnicity groups, not only the three main ethnicity groups of Bosnian Serbs, Bosnian Croats, and Bosnians. So, it should be cooperation between all the ethnicity groups, including the minority groups of the Roma community and the Jewish community. For example, for instance, the structure of my presentation, so uh, it will uh, contain, it, it, it will comprise four main components. The first one will be introduction to the problem. As I told you, I will talk about, uh, I will try to clarify the notions of uh, peace, violence, negative peace, and positive peace. The, the second point is uh, the theoretical component, negative, positive, and cultural peace, which were developed by the Norwegian scholar and the founder of the Norwegian uh, Academy of Peace Research, Johan Galtung. Uh, the, the third uh, component is a theoretical component, uh, as I call it theoretical component two, is conflict transformation by peaceful means. Uh, so some important guidelines uh, in order to transform uh, conflict, violent environments in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, in particular, or in uh, Balkan countries, which could be applied also or certainly to the Balkan countries, it could be assumed. The fourth point is the proposed uh, European Union's con concrete conflict management steps. So first of all, before uh, the role of the European Union in the Balkans, in particular in Bosnia and Herzegovina, is to help achieve positive peace. Positive peace is um, the creation of cooperative 
environment between all the ethnicity groups in Boston, between the ordinary people and uh, negative peace, uh, according to uh, Johann Galtung, a negative peace is the absence, it's not just the absence of conflict only, it's most specifically the absence of direct violence. And direct violence means organized viol activity, violence activity, organized violence activity such as genocide, <coughs> war. So negative peace is only the absence of direct violence. So the fact, the starting point of uh, my assumptions will be that uh, the end of the war in Bosnia-Herzegovina doesn't uh, mean that our work has been done. That means, that does not mean that, that the structural conditions and circumstances are eliminated. And finally, thus, that does not mean, that does not signify that the conflict has been resolved. So, uh, further, I would like to clarify um, uh, some other terms. For example, negative peace. This is the absence of direct violence. Direct violence is a direct uh, violence, for example, uh, somatic. It has somatic dimensions. For example, violence against your body, violence against your psychological state, violence against your mind, such as killings, genocide, assassinations, and uh, even torture. So these terms might be uh, might enter might be included in the semantic field of of the concept of direct violence. Also, negative peace might be uh, perceived as uh, so uh, according to uh, what has been written um, about conflict management in Bosnia Herzegovina and in particular the European Union's approach. Uh, negative peace has been achieved in Bosnia, so that means that there is no war. There is no direct violence in terms of mass, mass organized violence. So there is no direct violence, but that's just one step, one step in peace building. Just one step in peace building, which was achieved in, in 1995 after the, conclude, the, the war ceasing Dayton Agreement, or in other words, the Dayton Peace Accords, as they are officially taught in the Oslo documents. The term direct violence could be related, uh, it's also called personal violence, because it has more direct impact, negative impact on persons, on, in, on individuals. And the meaning of negative um, is in that sense, uh, it's, as, you, as I'm going to show, is uh, a gap and it brings uh, forward the idea of something incomplete in the process, in the achievement after Dayton. So, peace has not been built. And, uh, of course, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, I'm going to explain that, uh, um, just I would like to assume that there are indicators for uh, direct violence. For example, um, of, there are no in in indicators for direct violence the direct violence now, but in general the indi indicators for the, the direct violence are uh, the level of organized uh, mass murder, uh, deaths from conflict, level of violent crime, number of forcefully displayed people, which is one of the problems the country's authorities are still trying to deal with the return of the displayed people, due, uh, the, the forcefully displayed people uh, during the war. Also the number of homic homicides is another um, indicator for direct violence, or uh, it's another um, indicator for the absence of negative peace. Also perceived criminality of society, if, if it's high according to uh, uh, the Global Peace Index in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the, peace, the perceived criminality in society, or the perceived idea that there is still criminality, the fear and the distrust in, 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 in the other, that there is still criminality, it still exists to, to, to high extent. And number of armed services personnel is also an indicator for direct violence. The other notion, positive peace. Positive peace, this is actually what uh, the European Union might uh, help achieve in Bosnia-Herzegovina. It's the absence of structural violence. St 
Structural violence, in other words, is also called indirect violence. So these are violent activities which they don't interact directly on your mind, on your body, on your uh, es essence as a person or as an individual. But can they can also they, they also can be they are also they are those circumstances that are hidden in uh, under the surface of the societal panorama. Uh, positive peace, the aim for positive peace and the promotion of this collaborative environment is one of the major, um, is actually one of the major uh, fundamental political uh, features we have to think about is the role of the European Union in that respect. <clears throat> According to the American academic uh, Jong, um, structural causes, um, actually they are, their presence are uh, the thing that uh, is one of the th that causes the lack of positive peace. Lack of positive peace or the presence of structural violence. The indicators for structural violence are uh, still present at Bo in Bosnia and Herzegovina. First of all, the um, political uh, fragmentation of, uh, the, of, the, of the political groups. The um, se second, the lack of uh, trust between the eth ethnic groups, be between Bosnian Serbs, Bosnian Croats, and uh, Bosniaks, or Bosnian Muslims. And the disrespect for human rights is another indicator for structural violence. Uh, morbidity rate. So in that sense, let me clarify the term morbidity. So morbidity, these are uh, deaths caused not by uh, direct violence, but by indirect uh, features such as uh, diseases, for example or lack of quality in uh, life, or lower, lower life expectancy. Unemployment rate, also, which is high not only in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but in uh, other countries from the region, is another um, structural indicator for violence. And um, according to uh, Global Peace Index uh, 2010, uh, this indicator is very, this rate is very high around um, for Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, from among the young people, for example, around 30% uh, are uh, unemployed. Because unemployment, it can bring forward and cause and lay the foundations of uh, criminal activities, organized crime. People who can't uh, afford their lives, so that's why uh, it's uh, also a structural violence. A level of life expectancy is usually, uh, according to Global Peace Index, uh, low. And military expenditure of the of the country and the society um, is also another uh, violence. According to a uh, uh, small arms survey, um, there are a great uh, number of young people, youngsters, even teenagers, who, who illegally possess uh, arms. The instruments for uh, even instruments for uh, direct violence over on uh, somebody. The third concept I would like to clarify, and uh, which will be taken into account uh, from theoretical point of view, from structural and uh, cultural point of view, uh, should be taken uh, regarding the region by the European Union, and its role is cultural peace. A cultural peace is the absence of cultural violence. Cultural violence was a new concept introduced by Johan Gautuk in 1990s, and that means um, Cultural peace means the absence of cultural violence against uh, uh, for the cultural features of, uh, of a specific society. In that sense, Bosnia and Herzegovina against uh, language, linguistic violence. You can, it will be assumed to use this term linguistic violence, which is possible because in linguistics there are a language, a language called superstratum, which is the language which is imposed on the conquered society and the substratum, which is the language of the conquered society. So language uh, and, uh, either, and the legalization of violence is uh, actually um, lack of cultural peace. 
Uh, the cultural piece itself can contain nuances of direct and, and indirect uh, violence. So cultural piece, if, if uh, during the war a lot of churches, uh, Muslim churches and, and also Orthodox churches uh, were destroyed by the, respectively by the Bosnian Serb army, the remains of the, of the powerful Yugoslavian army. And um, on, on, on the other hand, uh, Orthodox churches also were uh, destroyed. So this is direct violence from cultural point of view because it's violence against a cultural monument or against a cultural feature of great value for the particular ethnicity group, for the, for the Bosnian Serbs, for the Bosnian Croats, or for the Bosnian Muslims. These uh, features, churches, uh, languages, um, they, they form the so-called cultural identity. Language, uh, I will add art, science, ideology, music as well. So in terms of music, I'll try to point out. It will be uh, interesting that, uh, for example, in uh, Balkan countries, not only in Balkan countries, uh, for example, in, in music, for example, metal music, it, music can also contain violent, violence, can also create violence among people. And uh, so, as I told the cultural peace is justification, legalization of violence, in the not only in the political framework of the country, but also in the consciousness of uh, the of the society of the of the particular country. So, indicators for cultural violence um, can be ideology in speech and rhetoric. So, the rhetoric is a sharp, harsh rhetoric. Imposition of language, as I told, the superstratum. Violence in religion and religious objects. Violence in music texts, for example violence in TV and media, and the level of preservation of cultural symbols. For example, in uh, Mostar, the old bridge, Stari Most, which is also called Stari Most, was declared one of the United Nations heritage symbols. Well, this is the first conclusion about uh, the, the, the levels of peace. Um, first of all, um, I would like to share with you my understanding about, in formulas about uh, negative and positive peace, about these two stages of the peace process, the peace building process, dimensions of stages of the peace building process. Negative peace is the absence of direct violence, but the absence of direct violence, this is not enough, it's not sufficient to achieve uh, stable, sustainable, cooperative environment in Bosnia and Herzegovina and perhaps in the other Balkan countries as well, because there is a black gap, black gap which remains, I would uh, call it unpredictability, because there is lack of security, whether all the, uh, all the sources and, uh, and the routes for future, which might trigger to future violence, are reduced, at least reduced or eliminated. So that's why I say unpredictability is difficult to predict, whether the sources are uh, eliminated or at least reduced in the country. Positive peace, uh, which is um, actually uh, the, the main point in the role of the European Union in Bosnia and Herzegovina, this is the elimination of not only of direct violence, which is, which is negative peace, but of indirect violence or structural violence and cultural violence as well. And uh, uh, further, the concept of positive peace uh, was developed, uh, it can be developed into uh, the, co the concept of prevention of, of future violence, the prevention of all kinds of future violence, not only direct to future violence, but indirect and structural future violence. Uh, that's why um, the Australian uh, researcher and professor, uh, John Burton, he talks about the, he invents a very strange word, prevention, which is the promotion of prevention, uh, literally, but that means the promotion of these um, collaborative environments created in the, at the society, societal and political levels, which should be created at the societal and political levels in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and in that respect. Uh, the second uh, part of my speech uh, will uh, concern uh, the, the approach, the exact approach in, in conflict resolution, uh, which uh, has been uh, underlined by uh, 
also by the uh, Norwegian, by Nor the Norwegian scholar Johan Galtung, but on the other hand by uh, other scholars, the Swede, the Swede uh, Jan Oerberg. Uh, they talk about conflict transformation by peaceful means, essential uh, points. So uh, there are in, uh, important uh, principles which will be taken into account. So when, um, first of all, in intervention, the intervening party should not adopt any side. So it should confront the problem itself, because the problem is our enemy, and it's only the problem. Uh, so the prevention and struggle against the causes of the conflict rather than against the conflict itself. The causes of the conflict, which, what is better, to, uh, to receive, to, to get the disease or to prevent it? To get the disease and after that to, to heal yourself or to prevent? What is better? I think it's better to prevent, not allow any diseases take over you. I think that this is better. So this is the idea, prevention but prevention by peaceful means, which I'm going to explain later, from uh, the perspective of the European Union. This approach. So the focus should be placed on the psychological, uh, structural, and human uh, causal dimensions of conflict. And um, another principle, none of the parties is threat. So the co uh, we might assume that the coercive uh, and uh, forceful approaches of uh, uh, also before Dayton and uh, NATO's intervention, uh, for example, in Bosnia, and uh, it didn't uh, bring uh, it, it didn't bring peace. According to uh, Johan Galtik, it was rather imposed agreement, imposed peace, not a real one. And to be shorter. Uh, According to this approach, you should be able to analyze the diagnosis and the prognosis of, uh, of the conflicts uh, in general. So the psychological dimension should be also assessed, so, such as uh, the idea of chosenness one ethnicity group might have. For example, it was the same with the Bosnian Serbs and the idea of greater Serbia. Uh, according to, uh, to, uh, to statements, to academic statements, also, the uh, traumatic memory of the past, uh, which is uh, actually a very complicated topic. And uh, so these uh, ideas, uh, these psychological violent, uh, violence triggers that remain in the, in the societies are actually what uh, the conflict resolution should be focused on. Uh, the concrete, uh, next, the next thing I'm going to mention are the concrete European Union steps in Bosnia, which uh, we have been talking, we have been discussing uh, today and yesterday Europeanization, the call, the so-called Europeanization of the European Union's um, transformative or no, a normative approach in uh, stabilize, in the stabilization of uh, the political uh, uh, structure in, um, in countries, for example, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the democratization, the, the respect for uh, human rights, of course, the, there were also ideas uh, to uh, proposals to amend the constitution of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, so that uh, it could include the fact that all the ethnicity groups, not only the three main constituent groups, might include, uh, but also the Roma minority and the and the Jewish minority can participate in the formation of uh, in the in applying for. Uh, for positions in uh, the institutions. But another idea um, which uh, uh, might be is uh, which the European Union might, uh, might contribute is uh, the fact that uh, an organization and promotion of intergroup activities, uh, this will be a specific step where it can help in achieving peace in, in, in conflict in, in um, Bosnia and Herzegovina. For example, uh, the American uh, scholar. Anthony Overshall, he talks about sport, sport organizations where the rules are equal for everybody, where there is cooperation and uh, in, in intercultural, inter-ethnic interaction between, between, ordinary, between people, between individuals. So the establishment of such organizations might be a good idea in order to, to, to achieve positive peace, in order to achieve cooperation 
and intergroup um, contacts because uh, the lack of intergroup contact is not uh, a feature for uh, the, the accomplishment of positive peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina. For example, I can mention the, the, the example of the sports marathon which was organized in Istanbul for, uh, for uh, handicaps. It was uh, written in uh, an article in the Southeast Times. Uh, that's all such an example. And another example, another contribution will be the reformation of the education system. So we should avoid uh, the presence of uh, the fact that there is uh, two schools under one roof. So discrimination inside schools among purpose, among, among children, among students, should be also another, uh, another area to deal with. Uh, the formation of, uh, so this will be another specific step, another specific focus of the European Union which uh, it might achieve uh, uh, by means of financial structural uh, support. The reduction of unemployment through inversions, for example, foreign investitions, foreign companies, establishment of foreign companies, uh, st um, stimulation of international investments. Uh, so it's another uh, exact topic. And the last, the last point I would like to mention, I'm sorry for uh, being so um, detailed in, the, in taking uh, maybe more time than uh, usual is uh, that gender equality uh, is also another focus of, uh, focus of uh, crucial importance for uh, the further uh, development of peacefulness in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, so women, uh, according to uh, Martin Nussbaum, a Swedish uh, researcher who wrote a book about the capabilities, uh, the capabilities approach of women in societies, uh, they are more peacefully oriented and more peacefully psychologi from a psychological point of view than, than men. And it can help foster um, um, more uh, transformation of institutions and uh, also the respect for human rights. So more women should be include involved in political institutions, in organizations, in local organizations of Bosnia and Herzegovina. This would support the process of achievement of positive peace. And also, as a concluding remark, I would like to point that only negative peace was uh, achieved in Bosnia. And uh, uh, in order to achieve positive peace, uh, the cooperation between ethnic groups and, the, and promote it, moreover, not to achieve positive peace, to promote it, uh, we should uh, make difference between conflict settlement and conflict resolution. And the European Union should focus on um, and, co and cooperate with the local people, with the local agencies of the country. And the, the joint efforts, the more joint they are between the, the European Union and the local uh, actors, the better it will be for, to achieve positive peace and to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, future violence. So that's uh, my presentation. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening.